Hi there students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter Topic. This is video number 16 on the applications of radioisotopes. This is going to be a very quick um, video, I guess, because I think you're probably going to look at these in a little bit more detail in class. But just at this stage, a couple of, I guess, uh, major points around the production of radioisotopes. Now we know that there are a number of different uh, isotopes of different elements that are unstable and we've looked at some of the reasons why they're unstable. Sometimes we deliberately want to produce um, unstable isotopes for different purposes. There's two ways that we can do that. The first is via neutron bombardment in a nuclear reactor. There's a simple way of remembering the difference between uh, what happens where. And a simple example of neutron bombardment would be to look at one of our previous examples. Cobalt uh, 60, for example, is one of the radioisotopes that we talked about previously. Um, and uh, a, an alternate isotope, a more stable isotope of cobalt, can be bombarded with a neutron in a nuclear reactor in order to form cobalt uh, 60. And this is the radioactive form, and we'll have a look at, at some of the uses of that in just a few moments. Um, this is what happens in a nuclear reactor. We're able to um, uh, create neutrons, and if we're able to target those neutrons to be fired at a specific source, then we're able to um, potentially, anyway, uh, create an unstable isotope uh, such as this cobalt-60. Now, uh, an alternative way of producing radioisotopes and the way that a lot of the um, transuranic uh, elements, that is all the elements beyond uranium in the periodic table, have been produced is in a particle uh, accelerator. Not all of them, but most of them. And that's because you need larger particles if you're going to produce these um, higher and higher elements. Um, some um, neutron bombardment was used for the production of neptunium and plutonium, which are both just in front of uranium in the periodic table, uh, just uh, beyond them. Um, but for some of the higher ones, then we really did need to use particle bombardment. But particle bombardment doesn't only occur for the transuranic or the very high um, uh, atomic weight elements. It can also be used for something uh, like fluorine. So if we start with uh, nitrogen, uh, stable isotope of nitrogen, and we fire in an alpha particle, which is one of the easiest particles, uh, or more common particles, won't say easy, but more common particles, then what we find is that 7 and 2 is 9, and 14 and 4 is 18. Uh, from the periodic table, you find that um, uh, element number 9 is fluorine. So fluorine 18 is another one of our uh, medical application radioisotopes, and it can be produced by particle bombardment in a particle accelerator. These come in two types, linear uh, and also uh, circular, like cyclotrons uh, and so on. So these are just a couple of the different ways in which we can produce radioisotopes. And a lot of those are produced, or, or variations of those produced in this country. All of the radio um, isotope uh, technology is used for the production of radioisotopes for other than energy generation. Um, so most of the isotopes are used in different ways in medicine or industry. Iodine-131, for example, is a releaser of uh, beta radiation. It's very good for uh, treatment, particularly for cancer treatments and chemotherapy. Um, Iodine-123, uh, on the other hand, is more of a gamma uh, emitter, and therefore it is going to uh, be better for diagnostics. Uh, so this one for treatment and this one for diagnosis. And again, why we use them for relates to the properties of the particular radiation particles themselves. A couple of videos ago, I talked about those two very important properties of ionization and penetration. Ionization is very important if we want to destroy cells, but penetration is more important if we're trying to use a machine to detect um, abnormal growth and those sorts of things. Cobalt-60 is used in industry, um, particularly for detecting uh, leaks in pipes. We again can look at uh, using equipment that's going to detect any concentration of this particular isotope in an area, which is telling us it's kind of leaking out of a particular area. 
Now, americium-241 uh, was most commonly used in smoke detectors, but its use is actually um, diminished nowadays as we use more of a piezoelectric effect. I'm sure you'll have a look at a few examples in class for different types of applications of radioisotopes. And thanks for watching.